Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome back to Battle Brothers. This is the last episode that I'm basically um, recording in advance for this week, so this should be coming out on Friday, if my mathematics is correct. Well, next Friday. Well, no, this Friday, technically, so I'm recording this, like, a week in advance, so... Let's see... We have a professional standing... How's our relationship with some of the factions patrolled the realm? Food's okay, tools aren't great... He's healing up... We need to get some better armor and equipment... Let's chug down here for a second and see if we can help these guys out. Or if we can help their faction out. Maybe we just do like a patrol. The problem with doing a patrol for them is that their territory is really spread out. So it's not really worth it. Missing people. Attacked caravans. When you find Count Gunther von Uldritz, he's spending off a few nights chasing him out the door with a few parting curses. On the, the sight of you, however, seems to moment, momentarily settle the man. Sell sword, good to see you. Better than these so-called men. He takes a seat and pours himself a drink. He takes a sip, stares at it, then downs it all in one go. My loyal bannerman refused to take part to take on the goblins. No, not really interested. What else do you have? Burns the councilman is listening to a talk with a few peasants. When you find him, when you see you, they quickly depart, leaving the man with a satchel in hand. He holds it up. These crowns, the, the crowns in here, crowns that these people are giving me to give to someone, anyone to help us. People are disappearing, self sword, and, and they are found. They're not just dead, but mangled, mutilated. Let's talk pay. We need to be paid more. 750. We need some time to think about it. What's the other contracts? You enter a tavern and garner a few looks from your rival. Men whisper to one another and women ogle you, ogle you as they tend to do. But the bartender fists a cloth into a mug and calls you over. You're that mercenary everybody's, everybody's been wondering about, he says. Curiously, you ask how he could know, he, being that you aren't the only man to walk around with a sword. He laughs. The eyes, that's where I can see it. You're a man who hunts a, mo a most dangerous sort of prey. A life of taking lies is a world in and of itself, but you seek out those whose lives have garnered such odd values that their deaths would be but a monetary application for others. A purchase is placed, so thus you become the means to a transaction, is it so, isn't it? You are a bone collector, my friend, a grave digger, paid in advance. He chuckles. You nod understandingly. Suddenly the man comes up to you and explains that a local figurehead by the name of Gunhar, Gunhard, the trade master, wishes to have any your ear. When you turn back, the bartender is gone. I suspect that this is probably going to be something that they turn into in like another event. Very well. You garner trade well, welcome to working you in. Very well. Now that you're here, I would like to please shut the door behind you. One of the guards poke one of the guards pokes his head around the corner. You smile and slowly sot him out. Turning around to find Gunherd, the trade master, walking towards a window. He stares out as he talks. I need something. It's, well, you don't need to know what it is, he mutters. I need something delivered to a fellow Henrik Council. He's waiting for it in Durdersburg. It's important that it actually gets there. Important enough for an armed escort. Which is why I'm turning to you, company. What do you say? Let's talk money. We need to be paid more. Looks you sternly. Right, okay. North East, Durdersburg, accept the contract. Right. Durdersburg. Actually, that's relatively straightforward. This shouldn't be a, a hard... We just do that. While on the path, you come across a small army of children. The oldest and biggest amongst them is probably 15 at most, with a tussled crop of orange hair and a spear for a weapon. He's leading a troop of little fighting force... Provincial, uh, province, provincial. He's leading the troop, a little fighting force, provincial, to the path more than any town or city. As you cross past with you, this little leader tips his head at you. Make way, we are the righteous mark. We are on a righteous march and shall not stop. Curious, you ask where he's off to. The kid answers as though it's incredulous. You don't know. Well, let me tell you, Cell Sword, we are heading north for the, through the through the frozen wastes. Uncultured and uncivilized tribes need to hear of the old gods, either by word or by sword. He lifts the spear, a rather chirpy war cry is raised from the army. It appears some religious fervor has taken hold of this wandering and harm uh, of this wandering and harmless and therefore suicidal group. 
You ought to go home to your to your parents' kids. I'll save you the long walk and rid you of your valid boots. Let's go with that one. You tell the kids to go home to their parents. The leader laughs and others follow suit. Like little ones, easily impressed by their big brother. He shakes his head. Why do you think we come this far? Our parents know right where we are. They know where we are. We are in tr is truthfully right. The old gods need to be known need to be known throughout the land. Now make way. The kids press forth. A little banner flaps past you and various much clinking and clanking of their little weapons, mostly bottles and slingshots and tableware. No doubt they are marching towards their certain doom. Raiders and vagabonds are sort of prey upon them like hawks. Upon, lem upon lemmings and slave slaves don't mind making sustainable orphan children disappear. Where oh sorry, slavers. What do you mean slavers but they put slaves? Well, they get further than those threats, the northern ways will, provo will provide them the most frozen coffin to die in. Godspeed. Um, that's probably a reference to... There was an event during, um, I believe, the First Second Crusade, where you basically had, like, a pil like a, a peasant pilgrimage, which was basically a, it was basically a religious... A, a religious crusade, like, a, a religious army made up of mostly, sort of, like, religious, like, fanatics and devout people. Um, led by a man who was not particularly, he was very like devout, but his it was mm, his mental stability was questionable. Um, it was hard. It didn't end particularly well. They all got butchered, and their all their heads were like mount, put into a mound. It ended very badly. Now we're going to drop this off here. This quest can get nasty, um, especially if what I think happens may happen. Um, yeah, as long as we can get down here. Deliver the cargo. Finally, you've made it. Henrik the Count is standing there in the middle of the road. His hands clasped to his stomach, a slick grin on his cheeky face. Sell sword, I was not sure you'd make it. You lug a car you lug the cargo up and hand it over. Oh yeah, and why do you say that? The man takes the box and hands it off to a road man, who quickly hurries away with it tucked under an arm. Henrik the Counselor laughs as he hands you a sack to the crowds. The roads are rough these days, are they not? You understand he's making small talk and anything to get your attention to the cargo you just handed over. Whatever you get you've got your pay, that's good enough for your, for you. Uh, anything worth salvaging here? What's this level 2 contract? Is it a patrol? Yeah, Baron Rindwald von Erston puts a finger on the map. I need you to go here. He trails a finger to another close and then here. One long patrol. You kill everything that, you f that, that, that thinks it owns the roads and don't carry the instance name. Do be sure to take their heads though. I will not pay you anything. I will not pay you to take a vacation. I'll be paying you for each trophy you bring me on this return. How much are we talking about? So he's not paying us any more in advance. We need to be paid. Mm, we need to be paid more for this. We need to be paid in advance. We need to be paid once the work is done. We need to be paid more for this. No way. So that's all he's offering. So it's a usual tour around the city. Basically, another head hunt. We just need to find people. We have a limit of 25 heads. So, first we need to go up here. My tactics for these is very, very simple, which is that we do the set route as quickly as we can, and then we hunt about looking for people for heads to collect. It's as simple as that. Right, we get up there. You've reached Scrodum first, safe and for the most part sound. We'll run over here. Probably this is the faction that we're going to back come the come the civil war. Um, it's not the largest faction, to be honest. These guys up here, are, I think, the stag are the largest faction. But the problem is that they're really spread out. They're really spread out. So the only problem with ba us backing these guys is that we're smack in the middle. Plus. Yeah, these are actually the noble house. To die, he who dies, he who he dies, not whose fame survives. The noble house is proud and unrelenting family with a long and bloodstained history of conquest. Seated in the fair fortress of Gronum Fest, they take with arms what they consider theirs by right, and a ancestral feud of House Krieger proves never-ending reasons to keep both hating and hatred hating both their hearts. Yeah. 
the problem is the, these people, the son, the, the, this family up here, this noble house, are basically batshit crazy. So, pardon my language. So, if it goes to war, it's going to be us versus them, which is not fantastic. So, we've got to rush down this way. Ooh. Where did they go? Brigand hunters. Let's chase them down. Oh, this is going to be fun. I don't want to fight them in the dark. And they're going to the marsh. We've got seven days. The problem is with all this bad terrain, we'll likely get shot to pieces. Can we beat them to it? Open terrain, a war dog, a few war dogs, a few brigand raiders, and some marksmen. Engage. Right. We're going to have to push. They've got a lot of crossbowmen. Yeah, pushing it is. If we can kill those two, that would be worth it. Oh, lordy day, that's bad. Ripped here. Right, let's get this done. We need to close with them as quickly as possible. He's, ooh, Liffy's like, he's got ripped here and he's got, his health is in a bad state. Get up here. Shield. They're not releasing the hounds yet. Okay, they're going to be aiming for him then. Right, get him up here. Hop up here. Let's put a crossbow into him. We'll put one of the guys down here and start sniping them. And put him behind cover. They're not releasing the dogs yet. The crossbowmen are the ones that I need to worry about. Ouch. That's a lot of crossbowmen. Rightio. Is he gonna start? Let's... Let's kill him. Okay, we missed. Missed as well. Missed as well. Right. Let's be having your dogs. Oh, that's not good. I suddenly realise that these dogs may be a lot more dangerous than I thought. Right. If I jump here, he's had his turn, so he might get shot at, which is not going to be great. Jump here. Oh boy. This might have backfired horribly. Yep, yeah, they're going to kill him. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. 
right. Uh, stab him. Rip his leg wide open. They're gonna shoot him. No! No! Right, he's got second life. But we need to get these dogs down. Rip open his leg. I need... Who do I need to get rid of? Oh, I killed one of the crossbowmen. Killed the dog. Get up here on this hill. You missed. He's in a bad state. He needs to get into cover here. So they can't shoot him. Thank goodness I picked up that perk. Right, get up here. We've got to hack through him. Or at least try to. And engage these bowmen so they can't do anything. Though he's in a... Oh, I forgot. He's the guy who's in a really bad state. Yeah. Oh, gods. Alright, he's in a really bad state. Fortunately, none of them have knives. Right, kill him. Outright. Kill him. Outright. Crossbowman. Put a crossbow into that guy's side. He screams. Kill him. Put an arrow into his leg. We'll jump up here. Shield bass him. Jump in here. He can stay out of the way. He can jump in. Oh, I sort of. Bleeding. Please survive. Oh, that was so close, those two. I was so lucky. He's literally on 8 HP. Ripped his leg wide open. Oh, he's, yeah, he's bleeding everywhere and the man's screaming. We kill him. Get him up into range. I could have handled this a lot better. They just had so many archers. Kill him. Get him up. We'll kill all of them. Problem is, I don't think we'll get we'll get um, rewarded for the dogs, which is going to be a problem. So. We'll press up. Some of my guys are in really bad shape. Yeah, he's going to be out for a long time, as is he. Four days at the most. Four days at the most for these two are basically both out. We got. Oh, we only got one crossbow. That's a pain. Yeah, and we didn't get the dogs. Right, so he's out, as is he. So you're up. John Locke is doing very well health-wise. Morale is okay. Stamina he could use to work with. He's got the crossbow perk. Reach, which is for melee defense. Penalty for hit chance when shooting at a target with no clear line of sight is reduced. From that's quite nice when they have for archers. Uh, recovery unlocks the recovery skill, which allows you to rest a turn in order to reduce accumulated fatigue by fifty percent. Hmm. That one's quite nice.
Bullseye is very useful. It's always hard to choose Fast Adapter, Bullseye. I mean, I can make him a lone wolf and have him like really far back. Uh, wrong person, sorry. Footwork allows you to leave a zone of control. Actually, that might be useful for my archer so he doesn't get beaten up. Or I can just take Colossus. I take Colossus because it means he's less likely to take injuries. Alright, we'll take the pole arm for him. Okay, these are all terrible. He needs to be up here. These two guys are pretty much out of out of the game for a good deal of time. These guys need to be healed up. So let's run back up this way. Our gear took a pounding. We've got eight heads. So for us to pay off we need to kill another like seven people really. Reach an Urchin Urchendorf. Liffy suggests that the company should pick up some supplies. Yeah, that's not too bad. Anything worth picking up? We could pick up the wood, actually. Cheap trading resource. Now, this is the question. He's got 64 archery. Do I sift him over to be a crossbowman? That is the question. Take that out of the picture. And give him a sword and a shield. crossbows. Gives me slightly less range but a bit more damage. Ignores more armor as well. We want to sell off we'll sell off the small bows. Sell off the light crossbow. What else? Is there anything we want to sell off? Sell off that stuff. Give us a bit of money. Where are we going now? Oh, back that way, are we? We haven't got that many heads. Four days worth of food. We can probably like look up around here to find someone. We've got six days left. Hmm. Problem is, it's the risk versus reward situation, isn't it? How far do you push your luck? goes goes through here properly. I really do not like fighting and what's down here mucking about. Let's see what we have. If it's something worth hunting down. What 
Oh, it's going a long way. Really long way, not worth it. He's suffered from an infected wound. That isn't great. There's a herbalist in town, I believe, so we should be able to get him healed up. We are hemorrhaging money, hemorrhaging food. And there's no really anyone around here to fight. We could take on the people down there if we wanted to. But even a single lone fallen hero is a massive pain. Two days of provisions left. I saw I saw footprints, so those just undead people. Oh no, okay. Necromancer summoned a few geists. Ugh. We can check that out if we wanted to. I don't know what's there. We're running low on food. We've got literally two days worth of provisions left. Unknown garrison. I might just turn the quest in. We're not going to get paid particularly well for this, which is a pain. Brian von Ersten is reading scroll of papers as you welcome him in. He is curious how many um, kills you racked up. You report six, of which he harms to make small knot on a piece of paper. Nod, um, nodding his head, he kicks open the chest. You hand you your gold. Yeah, we lost money on that. We really lost money. Right, we should probably head back up this way. See if we can offload our wood that we purchased. Ugh, I hate geists. Nasty things. If it's night time, we'll push on and we'll go up to here and we'll see if we can get some better prices for stuff. Uh -oh, we're low on food. Okay, we'll have to push it. Otherwise the men will get angry at me. There's their company out. Ooh, a lot of men. Let's uh, sell the wood, bought it, so we're making a fair old chunk of cash. Sell the pitchfork. What do we need? We need arrows, which are not cheap. We'll just buy one load of them and then go down to the Fletcher down south. We'll buy some grain. Right, where's the nearest... healer? Be all the way down there, isn't he? Kennels, harbour. I don't think there's a healer here either. Need to buy some food pretty badly as well. No, no healer. Okay. Grab some grain and some. Some fish. What else do I need to? I might need to sell off some other gump soon enough. I know I normally like keeping those daggers, but I just need to have some bit of spending money in case we need it. Mm. That last contract didn't go particularly well. He's got an infection, which will take one to three days. Not he's back up, which is good. A rather uneventful episode, unfortunately, folks. Not a lot of fighting. We'll probably go down and check out the place down here. Den of the Undead. Hope's Last Rest. That might be interesting. Lair of Dark Rituals. 
But that's all for next time. I've been Cornish Knight. If you have liked, please press the like button. If you were to subscribe, please press the subscription button. You can follow me on Twitter or on Steam at the address provided below. I shall see you all next week. Have a lovely weekend. Goodbye.